Our next guest comes to us from the U.S. Department of State. President Barack Obama appointed Milan Vivir as Ambassador at Large for Global Women's Issues. In her capacity as Director of the Department of State's new Office on Global Women's Issues, Ambassador Vivir coordinates foreign policy issues and acti activities relating to the political, economic, and social advancement of women around the world. I know many of you are familiar with Ambassador Vivir's prolific work around the world. Ambassador Vivir most recently served as Chair and Co-CEO of Vital Voices Global Partnership, an international not-for-profit that she co-founded. Vital Voices invests in emerging women's leaders and work to expand women's roles in generating economic opportunity, promoting political participation, and safeguarding human rights. Prior to her work with Vital Voices, Ambassador Vivier served as assistant to the President and Chief of Staff to the First Lady in the Clinton Administration and was Chief Assistant to then First Lady Hillary Clinton. She also led the effort to establish Oops, missed that one. Sorry. She's a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, Women's Foreign Policy Group, and numerous other organizations. Please help me give a very warm welcome to Ambassador Milan Vivier. Well, good evening, everybody. I am so glad to be here. You know, I've been in New York the last few days at the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, many of you might ordinarily be there. Everybody was talking about this conference there. Uh, and I know some of the delegations spent some of their time here and some of their time in New York. So I bring you greetings from uh, everybody at the, uh, the UN Commission on the Status of Women. It is, uh, it is so wonderful to see so many of you here. It seems like yesterday when the leadership came to see me uh, to tell me about their plans, and I thought, oh my goodness, how is all of this going to happen? Uh, and it is really extraordinary to see you, and I want to congratulate NNEDV and GNWS for this extraordinary commitment uh, that this evening represents. I also believe that this second World Conference of Win Women's Shelters is truly trailblazing, truly vital, truly consequential bringing together thousands of you who are both grassroots activists, members of governments, heads of NGOs, and so many who are committed to this effort from more than a hundred countries to connect with one another, to share strategies for ending violence against women and girls around the world. And I know this evening is a celebration, but even though it is the end of this conference, it is not the end of your journey, and no one knows that better than you, because you will go back home and you will take these best practices that you've learned and you will build on the successful strategies that you've exchanged with each other and you will take the tools that you procured here and make an even bigger difference. And I want to salute several of the people here besides the leadership of the two organizations. I want to salute my dear friend, Congresswoman Donna Edwards, who years ago, years ago she was in this business. Uh, and then she went on to become an extraordinary director of a foundation. And her heart was always in what she learned in doing what you do every day. And today she has 
extraordinary influence in the Congress of the United States to make a difference on these issues. So, Donna, you're doing a spectacular job. I want to thank all the global ambassadors and dignitaries who are here. I especially want to salute uh, the Director of the United States uh, Department of Justice Office on Violence Against Women. And I was in the Clinton administration when uh, the law became the law of the United States, a model law, we believe, to protect the victims, to prevent further violence, to prosecute the criminals. And uh, Susan Carbon is doing such a great job uh, for our country, and I know her door is always open to everyone. And I heard you had a drop-by visitor the other day, a certain, a certain president who was president when we passed our first Violence Against Women law. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, he was able to sneak in here and talk to all of you. And I want to salute Verizon. I know firsthand what Verizon has been doing. The company is so uh, exemplary in terms of its commitment on this issue. Uh, they participated in an event we did at the State Department not too long ago on marking uh, observance to fight violence against women. And some of the videos, like those you saw tonight, uh, were just... Uh, extremely compelling for everyone who was there, and it was beamed to some of our embassies around the world. And they are emblematic of the companies that you've had here in addition. Uh, companies have learned you can do well, you can be a profitable business, and you can do good. And I don't know where we'd be without the companies on this issue. As you know, the scale and scope of violence against women and girls makes it simultaneously one of the largest and most entrenched global challenges. This is an issue, as you know, that cuts across ethnicity, race, class, religion, your educational level, international borders. It can touch everybody in a terrible way. And it affects girls and women at every point in their lives, from girl feticide and infanticide to FGM to child marriage to rape as a tool of war to human trafficking to dowry-related murders and domestic violence and so much more. This is not a cultural issue. It is not a private issue. It is a crime. And, and it needs to be prosecuted wherever it happens. There is no justification for this. And fundamentally, it is a violation of human rights, of our human dignity. You know, I remember some years ago now, when the fourth UN World Conference on Women took place in Beijing. And then First Lady Hillary Clinton gave her historic address. And she said, as she listed a series of violations against women and girls all over the world, she ended each listing by saying, this is a violation of human rights, and then encapsulated everything she said by saying women's rights are human rights and human rights are women's rights. So let there be no question and no doubt, this is first and foremost a serious violation of human rights. It not only destroys the lives of individual women and girls, it takes a toll on their families and communities, it robs our world of talent that we urgently need. And there is a powerful connection between violence against women 
and an unending cycle of poverty. It is a serious public health issue. This is a health issue because gender inequalities, in particular sexual and gender-based violence, pose grave challenges for women's health and their well-being and can even fuel the spread of HIV, which is happening so frequently still. It is also a productivity issue that the business community, when we were trying to pass our violence against women law back when, went up to the Congress and they said, do something. It is a human rights issue. It is a health issue. But it's also an economic issue. It's a productivity issue. Because when women are abused, they can't go to work. Their minds are someplace else. They're worried about their children. And it takes a toll on economies as well. And of course, it's a law enforcement issue. So I want to tell you today that under the leadership of President Obama and Secretary Clinton, we in the United States have put women front and center in the pillars of our foreign policy because women are powerful roles, play a powerful role as drivers of peace, reconciliation, stability, and economic growth. And this is embodied in countless directives, including the President's national security strategy. And as I hope you know, or as I hope you've heard, we have finally adopted our own national action plan for women, peace, and security. And we know that the most effective solution for women who are trapped in areas of conflict is to bring that conflict to an end. And women must be involved as peace negotiators, both because of their perspectives and experiences, and also involved in all of the post-conflict work that needs to rebuild a society. And prosecution for those who perpetrate these brutal crimes is absolutely essential. And I want to say that across the globe, our embassies were very instrumental in and continue to be in advancing this agenda. They also were instrumental and involved in this initiative and eager to help. And they have sponsored many of the advocates who are here tonight from diverse sectors and regions to attend this conference from Albania to Venezuela, from Brazil to Saudi Arabia, even f advocates from Syria whom I saw when I walked in tonight and it was like a reunion to think that they got here from Sa Syria. And I just finished a meeting with the Minister of State for the Promotion of Equality from Timor-Leste. They have a very tough job in Timor-Leste to address this issue. She's doing an amazing job. And it also happens that today is her birthday. So I wonder if we could sing to Minister Rodriguez. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Minister Rodriguez. I'm sure she'll never forget this birthday. Uh, and she has a long way to go to get back home. So like all of you, we see women as powerful agents of change, not merely as the victims, but as people who are creative leaders who can make an enormous difference, who are the problem solvers. But they can't do it alone. They need the men and boys, and I'm glad that you and so many others are focusing on the role that men and boys have to play 
in addressing this issue. We must understand that violence against women and girls is a policy imperative, that the problem of this violence is at its root, I believe, a manifestation of the low status still of women and girls around the world. And we have to end it. And that means elevating their status and freeing their potential to be the agents of change in their communities. And accomplishing this goal will require a deep commitment of education and economic opportunities for both men and women, boys and girls. So truly, women's rights are human rights, and we cannot settle for anything less. Let me now introduce by video a woman who wanted to be with you tonight, but she did manage to get her husband here. A woman who has continued to be the champion of women's rights in all that she does, the United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Thank you so much. I am delighted to be able to send greetings to each of you. This second World Conference of Women's Shelters is an exciting and important opportunity for thousands of grassroots advocates from around the world to connect with one another and to share strategies for ending violence against women and girls. You know this is an issue that affects women of every income level in every region of the world. It's estimated that one in three women will be physically or sexually abused in her lifetime. One in five will experience rape or attempted rape. This violence affects women's health and well-being. It hurts children and families and poses considerable costs to societies both economically and socially. It is simply unacceptable. This is not only a gender or economic issue, it's a matter of human rights and national security. We need to put laws in place to criminalize such acts, and they must be implemented in order to hold people accountable and to address impunity. We need everyone's involvement to help make this happen. People at all levels of society, in every vocation, at every age. Girls and boys, women and men, we all have a role to play. I want to thank the National Network to End Domestic Violence for being such a strong partner. And thanks to everyone here for continuing to stand up, speak out, and think of new solutions. Because like you, we see women as powerful agents of change. And through forums like this one, we are focusing on creative and innovative ways to harness the power of women to be part of the solution to ending gender-based violence. I hope this dialogue provides an opportunity to learn about what's working and how to build successful policies and programs to advance women's rights around the world. I will look forward to hearing about the ideas that you are discussing and what more we can do together.